Hi, I'm Robert Harley, editor of The Absolute Sound. We're here in my listening room with Danielle Cohen. He's the founder and chief designer of the Spanish loudspeaker company, Alcevox. He's here to set up the Caravaggio loudspeaker, which is the second top model. And he's here with Bob Vicentainer of Rhapsody, uh, which is the, who is the U.S. Uh, distributor, and Rhapsody has six retail locations in the United States where you can hear the Alcevox speakers. He's going to tell us a little bit about the speaker, which as you can see is not a cones in a box speaker that you traditionally see, and it's not a uh, electromagnetic magnetic driven, it's a true full range ribbon speaker, which is pretty unusual in the market. So uh, before Daniel talks about the speaker, I'll tell you a little bit about why I came to review this speaker. In 2018, uh, I heard at the Rocky Mountain Show uh, a fabulous demonstration of the forerunner of this speaker. And Jonathan Ballin and I still talk about how good that demo was, which is rare to remember a demo from six years earlier. And then at the Munich Show this year in May, uh, I heard the top model, and it was by far the best sound at Munich. So I was uh, very interested to review it. So I'm thrilled to have this in my listening room, and I'm going to be writing a full review uh, in the magazine. So uh, Danielle, tell us a little bit about um, your background and Alcevox, the company. Yeah, my background is mainly uh, technical. I studied uh, aerospace engineer uh, back in the 80s <laughs> in Italy. <laughs> Uh, I was fascinated by race cars, so my my dream was becoming uh, an engineer at Ferrari mm. for, for the Formula One cars. Mm. That was the direction, but as often happens during the life, something something changes, something happens, and I fall in love with, uh, with the speakers and music reproduction. Uh, I have always loved music for many reasons. Uh, mm. Try to sing and mm. do things like that with, without big success. Yeah. And then merging together the two, uh, the two things, the love for music mm. and the technical capabilities mm. coming from the university and the, and the aerospace uh, studies, uh, I found out ways to make speakers uh, in a sort of a different ways. Mm -hmm. So you've been making uh, true ribbon speakers for 40 years. Your first yeah. speaker was actually right, ribbon. Right. You, you've never made right. cones I in a started, box. Yes, I started 40 years ago. Uh, I was still a student uh, and I needed speakers like many of us and I didn't have the money to buy a decent one. And I stumbled into an article of a MIT professor that was talking a nice story about the fact that the, the symmetry was broken between uh, recording and reproduction because the sound in the recording comes from infinite points around you mm -hmm. and in the reproduction you are just reproducing through two, they were thinking about two uh, single source, mm -hmm. single points and the, the thing was not working. So the, I was fascinated by these ideas, and he was proposing a sort of do-it-yourself uh, panel speaker with uh, eight woofers, so mm -hmm. one in, in a row, mm -hmm. with, a, with a simple uh, dome tweeter in the middle, and I, and I made that, mm -hmm. and I was really struck mm -hmm. with the results. And then, little by little, I went into the direction of the mid-tweeter ribbons, because the, sim the simple, uh, uh, dome tweeter was not merging very well with the line source of woofers, you can mm -hmm. easily imagine. So I thought, what can I do? And then little by little I developed uh, the, the mid-tweeters. They were sold uh, uh, through an Italian company for a certain period of time. After some 20 years, more or less, this company decided to close uh, their business uh, and I found out myself with uh, ribbon tweeters but no woofers because they were making woofers mm -hmm. as well. So just out of uh, personal need, so to say, mm -hmm. uh, I, I decided let's try to do something more, not just the mid-tweeter ribbon with the same materials. I had the magnets, neodymium magnets, I had uh, uh, aluminum foil, I had mylar mm -hmm. film all and glue and all that stuff that I already had. I decided I want to explore 
the woofer section making a planner, a ribbon planner woofer. Mm -hmm. That, that's why we call it actually ribbon planner, because there are aluminum ribbons glued on a, a, a Mylar backing uh, diaphragm. Mm. So, so a ribbon speaker is a conductive diaphragm, very thin, suspended in a magnetic field, and the signal flows through the, the ribbon itself and interacts with the fixed magnetic field to move and make sound. Yeah. So it's different from... Uh, other types that might have a conductor bonded to the film. So a true ribbon, the, uh, the, the diaphragm is conductive. Yeah, correct, correct. Yeah. So, um, and this entire speaker is, and including the, the uh, driver technologies, your own in design and construction and the ribbon material and the pleating, you all do that in-house. Yes, everything is done in-house uh, for many reasons. Uh, uh, first of all, because I started developing the thing 40 years ago, so I, I learned how to make it. Uh, and now that I learned, I don't want to teach <laughs> other people <laughs> right. uh, becoming suppliers to make it for me. So I prefer to make everything myself. And the other side of the story is that doing myself everything, I keep 100% control on the quality and, on, and what exactly what I'm doing and what I'm right. selling. So you build every speaker by hand yourself? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I have uh, help from my wife, mm -hmm. which is my partner, in the, not just in the life, but also in the business. Mm -hmm. And sometimes my son is helping me, but it, no, yeah, n no, nobody from the outside is, uh, is, is, is called to help in these things. So that I want to keep everything totally under control. Mm -hmm. So this is a four-way design. Yes. Sir. So we have the, the woofer panel here, dual mid-range tweeter, and you, it's hard to see, but there's a super tweeter. Yes. It's so it's a four-way design. It's very, right. very narrow yeah. on this strip. Yes, this strip is just five millimeters wide, less than a quarter of an inch. So it's difficult even to, to, to see it. It's there, mm -hmm. but it's a four-way design, correct. And why did you choose to pursue uh, full ribbon drivers? Well, it, it seems like it's a much more challenging technology than, <laughs> than dynamic drivers. Well, uh, as we say in our website, uh, we... We like to be, uh, to be surprised by things. And the best way to be surprised is to make things in a different way. Mm -hmm. If you always do what everybody is doing, there is no surprise. Mm -hmm. So I, my, my, my philosophy is always I want to be surprised and I want to surprise uh, people that listen to our uh, music tools. Mm -hmm. So I, I was fascinated by, by the ribbons uh, since the beginning, uh, from dipoles, that was the very, very beginning dipoles mm -hmm. with an article on, uh, of the MIT professor. But quickly after that, I understood that the cones themselves added uh, coloration to the, to the music and only uh, things that are inherently uh, that have inherently force uh, over the full uh, or almost full surface of the diaphragm mm -hmm. could really reproduce uh, quick transients without coloration, without uh, any kind of problem. So for me, that was the, that was the only way to go. Right. V because. Very, very light diaphragms that have very little inertia. They move, Correct. they can start quickly and they stop quickly because yeah. they don't have a lot of mass to continue moving. Correct. Correct. And of course, uh, making this on tweeters and mid-range was somehow easy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty straightforward, let's say, mm -hmm. more than easy. Uh, making the bass, it's way more difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, uh, and that was, uh, was, was done only in the year 2009. So after a certain number of years, uh, mm -hmm. after starting with the mid-tweeters. Mid just a brief interruption, esteemed viewers. I'm Tom Martin, Chief Content Officer of The Absolute Sound. I'd like to invite you to subscribe to The Absolute Sound magazine, which we've been publishing for over 50 years. For $20 per year in print, or $10 per year in digital magazine format, you get 11 issues, each with around 100 pages of exclusive equipment reviews, music reviews, and buyer's guides. You also get early access to our three awards issues, Editor's Choice, Products of the Year, and Golden Ear. To subscribe, enter this URL in your browser 
or go to theabsolutesound.com and click on the subscribe button. Thanks, and now back to the show. I don't think anyone's ever made a ribbon uh, speaker with this level of execution with as much magnetic force and the push-pull driver technology and the steel frame uh, as this. There are 2,000, almost 2,000 neodymium magnets in this. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, correct. What I really uh, like in the music reproduction is the, the sense of a f no effort, no limits, very high dynamic capabilities. Mm -hmm. And I thought that the, the good way to go was not only having uh, very light diaphragms, uh, well, uh, uh, well covered by conductors, uh, but also having uh, very strong and constant magnetic fields. Mm -hmm. But not, not just constant and strong, but also very wide, very big. Mm -hmm. So they, they, the diaphragm can move uh, significantly throughout the stroke, the available stroke. And, and still stay within the magnetic and field. And still stay within a strong magnetic field without big uh, differences. That's been a problem in the past. Yeah, this is giving the sense of uh, freedom and no limits to the, to the music reproduction, which I feel is very important. There are a lot of um, beliefs about ribbon speakers, like they're hard to drive, which probably came from the apogees, you know, it had a one ohm <laughs> impedance. Uh, they don't go low in the bass, they don't have a lot of dynamic slam. Um, th this speaker doesn't follow that stereotype. No, as I said, since the beginning, I tried to make things uh, way more efficient uh, than, than before. Now, th uh, this is 94 dB yeah. and 4 ohm impedance. It's, it's quite easy to drive, and you drive them at home with how many watts? 100? Yeah, I have a single-ended tube amplifier that is 12 watts, right. and it's more than enough. Uh, t t 12 watts driving a full-range sure, ribbon sure. Is, is pretty unheard sure. of. Amplifiers we have here, solid state, uh, 300 watts, can give you more impact, more control compared to the tubes. Mm -hmm. But for tube lovers, it is nowadays possible to have single-ended tubes running with uh, uh, ribbon speakers, which was not possible year, years ago. So here it's, uh, it's always a matter of things. Uh, it's, uh, it's the neodymium availability that was not available 30 years ago or it was, but with unbelievable prices. Mm -hmm. uh, but also the fact that we have the push-pull and the push-pull itself, it's like uh, double the magnets and it means uh, more or less 6 dBs more efficiency. Right, so the diaphragm is being pushed and pulled from each side right. rather than just from one direction. Uh, correct. Magnets are on the two sides or the or the buffer type. Of opposite magnetic polarity and they have to be pressed together. Correct. And we do have this, the same thing both in the woofer and in the midrange. Mm -hmm. And the crossover is an external um, box and it's a uh, fully balanced symmetrical crossover. Yeah, that's another thing uh, that I really uh, believe in and to be honest comes from a cooperation with uh, Omega Audio Concept, another Italian company. We have been making shows together, especially at the beginning. Uh, yeah, uh, once you have uh, the same components on the plus and on the minus side of the circuit, uh, you get to a better control of the diaphragm. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something that goes uh, against all the uh, engineering theories. Mm -hmm. uh, having double capacitors looks like something absurd because you have two capacitors of double value to get to right. the same capacitance. Mm -hmm. Uh, but honestly, if you listen to it, it works. It's, it's way better. And how many models are in the line? This is the second from the top model. The, yes, second from the top. We have four. We have the Tintoretto. It's uh, relatively small. It's 1 meter 44 high. It goes very well into small rooms, mm -hmm. starting from 15 square meters, 150 uh, square foot. And then we go to the best seller, that is uh, the average size at Botticelli, one meter 77. Mm -hmm. And that's already available with uh, internal crossover, but also add on external crossovers like we have here. Mm -hmm. And this is the third, the Caravaggio, <clears throat> available as a normal Caravaggio with a relatively small external crossover or the big crossover like this one, Caravaggio XX with a very big crossover. Mm -hmm. Very big crossover is mainly 
the same as the small one, but what is the, the difference is that the, it uses the top quality components that are higher priced and much bigger mm -hmm. and much heavier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the last one is the Raffaello. Raffaello mm -hmm. is uh, same height as this one, but it's wider. It's mm -hmm. 85 centimeters wide and it's using a uh, symmetrical con concept of the of the mm -hmm. transducer so it's a double woofer on the two sides uh, double uh, mid tweeter and in at, at the center a single uh, super tweeter and that's what we heard at munich that yeah, that was in munich for two years in a row mm -hmm. but, but this uh, fits my room better and not just fits the room better uh, there is something special about this model that is not present in any one of the others and this is the mid-range mm -hmm. the the the, the mid-range ribbon it's something really special it adds uh, uh, more precision more power more body to to all the voice frequencies which are the most important ones all right well thank you for that explanation and thanks for traveling all the way from valencia spain to set these up in my room and i look forward to reviewing them uh, in a future issue of the absolute sound